Hello class and welcome to this first video lesson on chapter two, which is motion. So this is part one out of a series of videos for this topic. In this chapter, we're going to talk about motion, in particular, how we describe motion in physics, how we calculate motion in physics. So in this chapter, we look at things like distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration. So these are terms that we use to describe motion in physics. For this first video lesson, we're going to look at two terms, distance and displacement. So what is distance? This is quite straightforward. Distance, or more specifically, the distance traveled, refers to how much ground an object has covered. What about displacement? This is a new word. Displacement we define as the change of position of an object. So later, we'll do an example to show you the differences between distance and displacement so that you can understand these two terms better or these two quantities better. Distance is a scalar quantity because when you're measuring distance, you don't have to worry about which direction you're going. You only have to worry about how much ground you have covered. Displacement, however, is a vector quantity. So you have to worry about where you're going, which direction you're going when you are thinking about displacement. The good thing about these two is that both distance and displacement have the same SI unit. They're both a quantity of length and the SI unit for these two quantities or these two things is the meter. Let's look at example one so that you understand what's the difference between distance and displacement. So the example reads, consider the motion depicted in the diagram below. A student walks four meters east, two meters south, four meters west, and finally two meters north. What is the student's overall displacement and the distance the student has traveled? So let's do distance first because that is the most straightforward one. So distance is basically how much overall in total the student has traveled. So the student started from here, so this is the start, and then traveled four meters to east, two meters south, so that's another two meters, four meters west, and then two meters north. So the total distance, so how much ground this person has covered is 12 meters. So that's this person's distance. Next, displacement. What about this person's displacement? Now, displacement, like we said before, is the change in position. So let's think about this first and first. This person started here and then moved around and then ended up back at the same spot. So what's the person's change in position? That's it's basically zero because the person didn't change position at all. So basically, when it comes to displacement, the person doesn't have any displacement. He ends up where he started. So displacement in this case is zero. So you can see the differences between these two, between distance and displacement in this example here. So here's the answer for this example. You can pause this part of the video so that you can copy this down in your notes. We're moving on to example two now. So Hakim walks from point A. So this is the starting position to point B. So here, what is his distance travel? So from A to B, Hakim has traveled 10 kilometers in total. What about his displacement, his change in position? In this case, he started from A and then moves 10 kilometers to the east. So in this case, his displacement has the same magnitude or the same number as his distance, 10 kilometers. But remember, displacement is a vector, so we have to write down its direction. Okay, so in this case, he moves 10 kilometers east. Then we move on to the next question. Then from point B, Hakim runs to point C. Considering his movement from A to B to C, what is his distance travel? So 
distance travel is basically the total distance that he covered, the total ground that he covered. So it's 10 kilometers from A to B at first, and then a further 5 kilometers from B to C. So in total, he traveled 15 kilometers, and that's his distance. What about his displacement? So in this case, you have to think about his starting position and his final position. So A is his starting position here, and then his final position here is at C. So you have to think about the differences between these two positions. So in other words, what's the position change between the starting position and the final position? So it's this line here. So you have to figure out how far is this line from A to C. In order for you to do that, you have to figure out what's the length of this line here. Now, as you have noticed, this now looks like a triangle. So if you want to find this length here, which is the, the hypotenuse of this triangle, you have to remember your maths, your trigonometry, and use a certain formula to find the hypotenuse of a triangle. And that formula is AC squared, which is the hypotenuse, is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. So this formula is not in physics. This is a formula in maths, in your trigonometry, when you're trying to find the hypotenuse of a triangle. So we want to find AC. AB, we know, is 10 kilometers. BC, we know, is 5 kilometers. So AC is the square root of 10 square plus 5 square. And AC is 11.2 meters. And that is to three significant figures. Okay, so what is the displacement? The displacement is, so this is the answer, is 11.2 kilometers in the direction of, in this case, northeast. Okay, so that means the difference between the starting position and the final position for Hakim is 11.2 kilometers in the direction northeast. Another example, just to again show you the differences between displacement and distance. So use the diagram to determine the resulting displacement and the distance traveled by the skier during these three minutes. So the skier starts here at zero minutes and then goes here at the first minute and then goes here at the second minute and then goes finally goes here at three minutes. Okay, so that's the movement from A to B to C to D. Okay, so what's the distance? So the distance is from A to B and then from B to C and then lastly from C to D. So what's the distance from A to B? A to B is 40 plus 100 plus 40. So that is 180 meters. What about from B to C? So from B to C is 40 again to N 100. So that's 140. And then from C to D is 100 meters. And that's it. So add them all up together. So the distance covered by this skier is 420 meters. What about its displacement? When you are thinking about the displacement, you only have to think about its change in position. So you only think about the difference between its final position and its initial position. So initial here meaning starting position. So the position at the start. So initial is just another word for starting. So basically you just need to find the difference between these two. So its initial position is at A and we're gonna say this is where he started. So his distance there is basically zero because that's where he starts. His final position is at D, okay? So what's the difference from position A to position D? So for this position D is 140 meters away and it is in the east direction. So 140 meters minus zero, that is basically 140 meters still. And then don't forget to write down the direction, in this case, east. So the displacement of this skier is 140 meters east from her starting position. So to summarize, what should you take away from this video lesson? Make sure you know what we mean by distance, and this usually means the distance traveled or how much a ground has covered. And make sure you know what we mean by displacement. Displacement is the change of position of an object. 
distance is a scalar while displacement is a vector and they both are different quantities for length and because of that they both have SI unit of meter. In the next video lesson we're going to cover this part of the topic and we'll talk about speed and velocity in the next video lesson.